Welcome, and uh, here we are, another another week. And uh, what a lovely weekend that was. What a wow, that really was lovely. I spent a lot of time with Alfie over the weekend, and uh, a lot of walks. <clears throat> I must admit, on Saturday it was a little bit cooler than Sunday. Sunday really was warm down here. And, uh, and I managed to wear out Alfie sufficiently. We built a sand pit on Friday, so he's been enjoying that. So I had to apologise to the odd person that missed out on a game online. I apologise for that. That was me busy with Alfie in this sand pit. I don't know. So, uh, and you can see that on the blog if you want to on the site. Uh, it's up on the blog. Um, I, I usually post a few pictures, maybe once or twice a week. We'll see. We had some good fun on Friday in the teams, a nice pace, a good pace. Uh, the reason why I say it's a good pace is um, because it means I get I get to finish earlier. So that's good for me. Uh, no, and so we finished at uh, about 20 past nine. And um, some interesting, um, uh, some interesting hands. And, uh, and, and spoiler alert, spoiler alert, uh, for those of you who've not watched it. So close your ears now, we won. Uh, so that was pleasant as well. I think it might have been the red wine. We'll see. Um, so on the website, of course, we are summing up what we've talked about over the last two weeks. So this will be the, uh, the summing up of identifying slams. I know there's a lot of you. This is open to, to everybody. So there's a lot of you who won't necessarily uh, aren't on the website. So I apologise to you. But I mean, this is me. Uh, as part of the whole thing. So I, w I do talk about the website simply because it's part of the website. Um, and so hopefully you can get something out of it as well. Um, not, not being a member, but obviously I will be talking about that aspect. And so we've been talking about identifying slams. Identifying slams. And oh, I see. Sorry, we, we usually have the background open, don't we? That is interesting. This is our recording background. Uh, so for those of you who uh, who uh, who are yes, no, we usually have uh, the normal background, don't we? So anyway, that's it's just a change. We'll go back to the old background. Um, but yes, uh, we've got uh, basically this is what I use for recording as opposed to the live. But anyway, not to worry. So we're going to move on to Blackwood for the next two weeks. Uh, what do I mean by Blackwood? We're talking about how to um, use it, when to use it. Most of the time I'll talk about keycard Blackwood. I will then expect to be talking about Roman keycard Blackwood, but that will be on Monday week. So that's next week. I'm not that keen on Roman keycard, but I know a lot of you might not really play it or interested. So I will talk about it and talk about the disadvantages as well as the advantages. Um, and obviously from my point of view, it's relatively complicated. And given that there aren't that many more advantages than disadvantages, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but we'll look at that. But the, the seminar will focus more on the key card, but particularly when to use Blackwood. And of course, a lot of that time is going to be when we're excited at the right times. So we'll look at a lot of slam hands today. I'm going to do a little seminar with some slam hands in. I've also got a number of slam hands that have been sent in. We've also got this one. So let's look at that. This is what those of you who are on the Friday live would have seen. This is our hand evaluation exercise. Our hand evaluation blah. Our hand evaluation exercise. Apologies. Um, so you, your plan is to look at this and I want you to evaluate your hand. We're then going to see it through an auction. OK, so how do you feel about that hand? So I want you to assess it and then I'll come back to it later on and we'll have a bidding quiz as usual at the end, uh, which you'll be able to look up the answer online. Some of you may have already done that already. OK, so um, I've left you with that one. Hopefully you've had a good look at that hand and you can sum it up. Um, you know, you've got to decide whether you think it's more than 16, less than 16, whether it's a good 16 or a bad 16. OK, so, you know, what we're saying is that the point count isn't the be all and end all. And that's the crucial element, if that makes sense. We do use it. It is the structure of our whole system. OK, but it's necessary for you to, you know, to to sort it out. So we've got some good 16s and bad 16s coming in. So we'll see what I think in a moment. OK, we're going to go to have a look at our PowerPoint today. So similar to what we did last week on Monday, it's slam or not. 
And so we're looking at identifying. So let's see how we get on here. So here's your first hat. You are in the east seat. And it goes one club from your partner. One club from your partner. And you start by responding one spade. So it goes one club, one spade. And your partner bids three spades. So one club, one spade, three spades. There's some good words coming in here in the responses. We've got double fit, wow, double fit, aceless. I like that, Yvette. Okay, um, so what do we do next? Now there's only eight points. There's only eight points but this is the key to getting better at bridge and, and we've got some experienced players responding here, but as an inexperienced player, you're gonna be thinking, yeah, I think I can go for game. Whereas if you're counting your losers or you just see this element of double fit, it is exciting. Um, the only problem is, is if, if you spell exciting without the C, that is exiting, Hyatt. I thought I'd just mention that. Okay, so it is exciting and that's the key. And this is what we've been talking about over the last two weeks. When do we get excited? So point count isn't the be all and end all. And if you're honest, if your partner has three aces, you're gonna make six spades. If your partner's got four aces, you're likely to make seven spades. And if she's only got two spades, two aces, you'll only make five spades. And if she's only got one ace, you're disappointed. And it's possible, but I think it's worth bidding four no trumps just in case. So every so often you'll go too high. You'll end up in five spades. Okay. But I think, and so it's not the point count that's checking it. Notice those of you who count the losers here, um, those of you who counted the losers, it's not quite five losers because you're, you're aceless. Okay, so I think you're, you should, whenever you're aceless, bear in mind, what I mean by that is if you change your two kings into two aces, you would have the same number of losers. So always remember that if you're aceless, but still you're responding hands. So even if you've got six losers, you should be getting excited. So we're going to bid four no trumps, no, nothing to the particular hand, but you can see, yes, it's exaggerated, but there's just 21 points between the two hands. And if I'm honest, there may well have been some interference from your opponents who also have a double fit. Okay, but you can see, I mean, if there's nothing to the play, again, if trumps break three nil, you will go down. Uh, it happens to be the Queen, Jack and 10 that are missing. If trumps break 3-0, you'll go down. But again, you, all you're doing is bidding yourself to the best contract you can. Okay. So it would go five spades, showing three aces in normal Blackwood or keycard Blackwood, but not Roman keycard. Um, and then six spades. Let's look at this one. Because a lot of people have been asking about interference. Most of the hands, the set hands that were created for the first set probably shouldn't have had much interference, but I have to be honest, I know some of you have reported it back. And the reason why some people interfere is because they know it makes life a bit more difficult. But you do have to bear in mind if you are interfering, your partner's gonna believe you've got something. And Paul, um, I, to be honest, I thought Pete's double on one of the hands um, in the teams on Friday was perfectly reasonable, but it does have consequences when you double a bit lighter. So Pete had nine points, but with a void, I think it's reasonable, but it turned out that the consequence was that partner passed for penalties and they got a bad score. So there's always a consequence to coming in light and you've got to remember that, okay? You're not always gonna be punished, um, but but you've got to balance, you've got to get the balance between being aggressive coming in and not. So let's see what happens on this hand anyway. You open a heart, nice and simple with this hand. There's a two spades overcall. That's a weak or jump overcall. Your partner bids three clubs and it goes three spades. Okay, so you've opened one heart, two spades overcall, Three clubs from your partner, three spades. How do you feel now? So 
So I'm leaving it open to the, to the um, oh, and it feels good. It's not quite enough for me. Uh, someone else already had said that. I think you've got, the important thing is you've got to be excited. Okay, and how do you show excitement now? We haven't dealt with this, and the whole point about the seminar that we did the first thing was really, I just want you to be excited at the right times. Okay, um, and what we're gradually going to be talking about is how do you show your excitement and Brian and Pat and Lewis all in a row have and in fact Michael have all said what I want to say which is and a few more now is to basically bid, make a bid that will excite your partner as in it is not a normal bid and that bid of course is a bid of the opponent's suit. So when I bid four spades here what am I doing? My partner's got no idea what's in my hand he's probably thinking I've gone bonkers but the key is he is not going to pass four spades. Well, sorry. The key is I hope he is not going to pass four spades. My, both my opponents have bid the suit. And all I'm trying to do is say, partner, I'm better than four clubs I'm at, and I'm better than five clubs. However, the problem I've got is four no trumps doesn't give... I mean, it's not going to give me the answer I need. If I get one ace from partner, what do I do? I hope everybody is happy that three clubs is a reasonably strong bid from your partner and you've got a lovely fit and a lovely hand, including a singleton in the opponent's suit. So all you want to do is say, partner, I know we can make five clubs, but I am excited. OK, I am excited. Here, if you had a doubleton spade and a doubleton diamond, OK, someone's asking if I had a doubleton spade and a doubleton diamond here without controls in either of those suits, I would probably just jump to five clubs. But here I have a really strong hand. What's interesting, though, imagine you move the three of diamonds to the three of spades. You have the same number. Well, not quite the same number of losers because the queen of diamonds would become a loser, but it's still a similar hand. But double doubletons are not good. So here I would feel the chances of a slam if I had two small spades and two small diamonds. OK. Not, not really so high. But here, I want to say, partner, I don't just want to play in five clubs. If you're excited too, let's play in six. So I'm going to bid four spades. If you've never come across that, please don't worry. It is not an easy bid. But the most important thing is, is when I bid the opponent's suit, I do not want to play in their suit. Partner, I will be very excited if you pass, OK? So partner's going to bid something. If he doesn't understand it, it doesn't matter. Surely we'll end up in five clubs anyway. OK, now this next bid, we'll see our partners hand. This next bid is for experts only or for those of you who are used to it. Playing minors, playing in clubs is an absolute nightmare because Blackwood is really difficult because if partner shows you one ace, you end up too high. So what experts tend to use in this kind of auction is the four no trump bid as meaning one thing and the five clubs as being another. So East isn't sure he wants to go past five clubs because he's sort of relatively minimum for his three club bid, but he does feel quite excited and let's work out why. Generally in these kind of auctions, I'm prepared to trust my opponents. I think my opponents, now we're looking at the East hander, this is the hand on your right. Most of the time when I've heard this auction, I expect my opponents to have nine spades. I've got three spades, yeah, and therefore I'm thinking my partner's got a singleton. And if my partner's got a singleton spade, I've sort of got everything else covered in a little way. I've got a singleton in hearts, I've got ace, king of diamonds, and hopefully partner's got some nice clubs. I don't think I can bid black or any, any kind, but what I'm going to do here is what experts do is they use four no trumps, not as blackwood. Now this is not easy, please do not worry about this, I'm just showing, uh, telling you what they might do. Four no trumps would say, partner, I've got a good five club hand, and five clubs says, partner, I, I only want to play in five clubs. So I'm not recommending particularly playing this, but I'm explaining how they would get over this. Because can you see that if he bids Blackwood here, too often his partner will show, remember, he needs three key cards to make a good slam. He needs the ace and king of clubs and another ace. OK, or, or three aces. So if he gets two as the response, he's miles too high. So it's not easy. So what he does is he's bidding four no trumps here to say, partner, I like my hand, but I don't want to bid past. I don't want to bid past slam. And at this point, I think um, West would bid six clubs. 
That is extraordinarily difficult and bidding minus suit slams is and we're going to be looking at that over over time, um, you know. So I'm not saying, all I'm saying is there's two excited players here. Uh, I, I'm, and, and that's what a lot of this last two weeks has been about. It's about been about, look, if you're both excited and you bid a slam and you go down, I'm not too worried as long as you look at the hand afterwards and say, yes, we both should have been excited about that. Okay. And that's what the interference does. I think with a little bit more time, for example, we may have had a splinter coming in. I think the bidding could have gone without any interference at all. I think we could have bid quite accurately to a slam here. OK. But with the interference, can you see that if you bid five diamonds with the east hand, it's a perfectly reasonable bid, but you're in six clubs already. If you bid above five clubs, you're 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 in six. So in, in a way, bidding five diamonds would be saying, partner, do you think there's a chance for seven? Because we've already gone past five clubs. OK, so from my point of view, the East Hand is not sure he wants to bid six clubs. So he's just trying in an expert partnership. I'm, I'm really, you know, this is not easy. They will have a bit, four no trumps will bid mean one thing and five clubs the other. So usually four no trumps will be partner. I'm, I feel I'm a bit better than, than, than nothing. I've got controls and five clubs would say, to be honest, partner, I don't think a slam's on. If you can't bid it yourself, you know, I'm not taking the blame if it goes down. OK, I do really, really difficult. What I want to get across there is that there are two excited hands. OK, but I think that's a really, really, really tough hand. OK, let's look at one more then. And this is all about. Again, we're excited, but how do we bid? We're going to talk. Gwen's mentioned something called Diamond Wood there. I do like it. It's good fun and we may have a look at it. But unfortunately, uh, not today, but unfortunately the hand wasn't quite ideal for it because it had weak diamonds as we're going to look at here. OK, so let's look at this hand. Um, I think you're probably just you're borderline, to be honest, on a strong opening hand. But with the Queen Jack Doubleton in hearts, you're better off opening one spade. OK. I think if you had Queen Jack six of hearts and just the singleton club, this is probably worth a strong two. But with the Queen Jack Dalton heart, you could you could imagine them being thrown in the bin. So I think you're better off opening one spade. OK, but as I say, if I move the six of clubs into the heart suit and give myself a singleton club, I think it's probably worth, you know, opening a strong bid. OK, that's for those of you who play with sort of Benji style. If you play three week twos, you have no choice. You have to open with the one level on hands like this. So it goes one spade, three spades. One spade, three spades. So how do you feel about this one? So it's one spade, three spades. <clears throat> and um, we are relatively horrid, um, but, but we've got to be excited. We have 19 points in a six card suit. And to be honest, if, if you ask me how many times would I make a slam with this hand, I'd probably play 40, 60. I'd say 40% of the time I'd probably make a slam, 60% not. OK, so um, and the key is, should you bid Blackwood or not? So I, I, first of all, I am excited. So I want you to do something. I don't want you just bidding four spades. It might be correct, but I do not want you just bidding four spades, if that makes sense. OK, you bid Blackwood, you get one ace response. OK, and as a lot of you are saying, that's not going to work. If you get one ace response from your partner, I don't think you know what to do. We do not bid Blackwood with those hands. And as, as you'll see, we're going to be talking about this for the next two weeks. But we do not like having weak suits when we contemplate Blackwood, because if you get one ace back, you may be able to make a slam, but you will not know if you can make a slam. 
So what we are going to do here is bid what's in our hand in a way. When you've agreed a suit, surely four diamonds can't mean anything else. It, do it doesn't even matter if you play cubids or anything like that. All you're saying is, partner, my strength is in diamonds. Of course, for most of you, it probably is. <clears throat> Gerbo is no good here at all. Any ace asking bid is no use to you at all on this hand because you still will not know whether you can make a slam or not. You need to know whether you have cover in each of the suits, because I'm going to show you two opposite hands, one hand where you'll make a slam and one hand when you won't. Okay. So Blackwood is not the answer, nor is Gerber. So any ace asking bid is not going to tell you whether you should be in a slam. Okay. So here, for example, if I gave you the, your partner this hand, clearly you would not make a slam. For me, four diamonds, it, it, I'd be using it as a cubit, those of you asking, and we will be looking at cubiting. It is exciting, but difficult. Uh, and the key about a four diamond bid here, when we talk about cubiting, okay, so you've got this hand here where you, can, you cannot make a slam because the opponents can take your clubs, but notice that you do have the potential for slam. In fact, you have 12 tricks off the top. Uh, no, I tell a lie, I'm adding it up. It's 13 tricks off the top. So if your opponents lead hearts or diamonds or spades, you will make all 13 tricks. Six spades, three hearts and four diamonds. Unfortunately, of course, they're first to go. And if they lead a club, you will lose two clubs. However, if I change the hand to this one, again, you've got a, a normally 11 count opposite, okay, here, we will make a slam. Okay, even if they lead a club, we can draw trumps and discard that club on the diamonds. Um, but we've also got a stopper in hearts. Okay, so we'll only lose one trick. And the, the, the bid that we should make, I'm not going to go through the whole auction, but if I go back, we're going to go one spade, three spades, four diamonds. And the key is, and we're going to talk about this when we talk about Q bidding, is that the four diamond bid is denying anything in clubs. So it's not a trial bid. But bear in mind, if you bid four diamonds as a trial bid, that just shows diamonds. It doesn't deny anything. If you're playing Q bidding, uh, particularly my style, which is Italian Q bidding, then if you miss something out, you are denying anything in clubs. So the beauty is it can quickly end an auction. What do you think the next bid is after four diamonds in this auction? What do you think you could bid here? And until we get used to it, don't get me wrong, some of you aren't used to it, but of course the answer is actually, believe it or not, four spades. Because four diamonds has denied anything in clubs. Well, if East hasn't got anything in clubs either, then in fact, we can't make a slam. So we're not interested in knowing if partner's got hearts. We need him to have control in clubs. Really tricky, we'll come to it another time. So please don't worry about it if you've not done cubiting before or even done Italian cubiting. But the four diamond bid here has missed out clubs. So I'm saying partner, if you can't do anything with clubs, neither can I. So don't bother showing me anything else. That's it, four spades is high enough. So it is hard. Okay, but the idea is, is that East looks at his hand, he thinks, oh, I've got a lovely ace, king and hearts. But actually, there's no point worrying about them because partner's got nothing in clubs. I've got nothing in clubs. Four spades is high enough. So although it's difficult, it can be quite quick. Okay, bear in mind that eight years ago, it's one of the only things that I have made a big change in my teaching. Eight years ago, I did not teach this way, but I found that this was the easiest way. So I think the very first set of DVDs I created, the very first set, I think has me talking about what I would call old style cue bidding, which is bidding first and second round controls. I prefer this and I will explain when I talk, when I talk about it, when I talk about cue bidding, I will go through it. It's not easy, but the idea is you need control of every suit. So the fact that we have diamonds and hearts is all well and good, but if we've got no control in clubs, we cannot make a slam. So we're getting excited, but it's about what we're now gonna be moving on to over the next three or four weeks, or maybe even five weeks, is how, that, how, how do we bid these slams? It's all well and good, we both get excited. 
And some, and sometimes, if I'm honest, maybe the best way of bidding a slam if you're both excited and you can't work out why, it just bid six spades. And you never know, they might not lead a club. Okay, so, you know, we've all been in slams like this, uh, you know, six spades, and if they don't lead a club, you make it and think, well, I'm glad I bid it. Okay, uh, um, or you end up in four spades and make all 13 and you send me an email saying, how could we be in six? Okay, so um, anyway, so you can see the hand. So I'm not going deeply into it, just showing how at least if we get excited at the right time, we've got a chance. I hope everybody can see you've clearly got wonderful potential there. Once again, I've given you 13 top tricks. Okay, ace, king, queen, jack of hearts, ace, king, queen of diamonds, ace, and obviously you know, six spade tricks. So we're, we're getting excited at the right time. Both of us think the slam could be on, but we have nothing in clubs. Okay. If we find we have control of every suit, then we bid blackwood. And that's when we discover if we've got enough aces. So for example, if East had had a singleton club on this hand, if he'd had a singleton club and, the, and let's say the same hand, not exactly, then we could have ended up bidding Blackwood. We'd find we were missing one ace, but if we have control of every suit, then if we're missing one ace, we can bid Slam. Whereas if you don't have control, if you'd bid Blackwood here, you were found you were missing an ace, and you wouldn't have known whether to bid five spades or six spades. Okay? So with a singleton club in the East hand, East would bid four hearts. And that would say, I've got control of hearts, and I've got something in clubs as well, partner. Not easy, not easy. When we cover the, the when we cover cue bidding, what I say to people is when I cover cue bidding in a seminar, think about it. If you think you can cope with it, it's quite exciting. And your partnership, if you think your partnership can give it a go, go for it. If you don't, well then that's all well and good. Then on hands like this, you'd probably end up in six spades and sometimes, as I say, you'll make. But, you know, you, or you'll bid four no trumps, missing one ace. But what I want you to do is understand that Blackwood is designed simply. If you are missing one ace, you should be in slam. Assuming you've got excited at the right times, I should say. Okay. So, of course, the last bit here would be pass. Okay. So you go up the line. Yes, thank you, Wayne. Okay, so that's all on there. As I say, not easy. Um, what I really, what I focused on on this last two weeks coming up today, because of course it's a new seminar today, um, is when to get excited. And, and what I want you to do is look at, look at the hands. Let's say you're doing the set hands and you look to them. There'll be a number of those where I didn't, I only wanted one of you to get excited to get excited. If the, and hopefully the other one didn't, in which case you wouldn't have been in a slam. Okay. <clears throat> so let's look at this one. So this is, oh, I've got to change. I've got to get you over there. Okay, here we are. This is the evaluation. So we had a mixture. I'm glad that you all were in 16 points because I think that's right. Okay, I don't think we were above 16 or below 16. Are we a good 16 or a bad 16 or a intermediate 16? We had three different versions. Um, and to be honest, Okay, to be honest here, there are ups and downs. So the first thing is you should not be adding a full point on for your five card suit, okay? Because it's not good enough. So if I have a good five card suit, I add a full one on, but a five card suit is good news. So I'm adding on, I'm, I'm, say, I'm saying it's good for my heart, but, as someone has pointed out, the jack of spades doesn't look so good. So I think there is good and there is bad. And for me, it's slap bang in the middle. Okay, slap bang in the middle. So with a five card suit, I am always upgrading. But if it's a very good five card suit, I will be adding a full point on. So for example, if I have king, queen, 10, nine to five hearts, I would be adding a full point on for that suit. So to put it bluntly, if you want me to explain what a bad 16 is, if I move the five of hearts into the spade suit, so we were four, four, three, two, I would believe that was a bad 16. So move the five of hearts into the spade suit, so you were four, four, three, two. I'm not taking a full point off for that shape, it's still okay, but, I, the two long suits have one isolated honour and the, 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 the honours together in the short suits. Bear in mind, although the honours are in the short suits, they are at least together. 
ace king king queen and also you have the nine of hearts something little okay if you wanted the exact I would say it's probably 15 point, from my point of view, it might be 15.95. So it's probably just underneath an average 16. But to me, I would call it an average 16. However, let's see what happens in the auction because things change. One heart. Oh, well, I've got to start the auction. I've given away your opening bid. I hope everybody's happy with one heart. Bear in mind, if you were opening, a, if you were playing a strong no trump, you would open that one no trump. And for those of you who do like one no trump or want to see how it's played, we are playing a strong no trump this Friday. On Friday, we are playing a strong no trump in the Friday team. So I'm going to play with Brian a strong no trump system. I will explain the, the system fully uh, if you come on board to watch and our opponents will as well. At the other table, hopefully they'll be playing a weak no trump and I'll be talking about the way the hands will differ between the two systems. So the auction's gone one heart, one spade, one no trump from your partner pass and it's your bid. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, one heart from you, one spade, one no trump from your partner, pass. Yeah, uh, so for those of you who um, are not members, apologies that uh, the, the, the Teams is only on the members' site. It's only on the members' site, uh, the Teams. Okay. So it goes one heart, one spade over, I shouldn't apologize, sorry. Become a member, enjoy it. Come, come on board uh, just for a month, see how it is. You can cancel any time, but I have a feeling if you're not on board, you will enjoy it if you do come on board. And if you find it doesn't work for you, of course you can cancel uh, any time you wish. Okay, and you can do that at Bernard McGee Bridge. Okay, so it's gone one heart, one spade, one no trump. How do you feel now? That's the point, that's the key. I want you to tell me how you feel now about. So how would you evaluate your hand now? So I said it was about 15.98. What do you think? Do you know, I think it's, I think it's probably close to 15 points now. Okay, that Jack of Spades, I can, I'm tempted to throw that in the bin. And a lot of the time in an auction like this, if your partner has three hearts, he will try and support. So when you're in a competitive auction, a lot of the time that North has three hearts, he will bid two hearts rather than one no trump. So suddenly I'm thinking my five card suit isn't going to be so helpful because partner might just have two and the jack of spades isn't looking good. Not only that, I've got a balanced hand, my partner's got a balanced hand, so I'm thinking of playing in no trumps and the lead is going to go through that jack of spades. So I'm expecting a spade lead. I know I'm expecting my partner to have a stopper. He doesn't have to in, in some systems, but I'm expecting him to have a stopper. But I still don't think that jack of spades is going to come in handy. So for me, if I had a good 16, I might try for game. But I think this is closer to 15 than 16 now. So I'm not that excited about my five card suit. I've completely downgraded my jack of spades. Don't get me wrong, my clubs and diamonds I'm happy with because quite often my partner will have length in those suits. But I'm going to be honest, I'm going to pass this. Okay, and, and I'm, I'm not even sure we'll make it. Okay. So I hope everybody's happy with that. We started off, I think, almost exactly as 16 points, so up and down. But once I've had a couple of bids, and this is how I want you to go through, okay? Again, those of you asking about cube bidding, it's a complete another topic and we will come across it. Okay, so I'm expecting partner to have six to nine points, possibly a bad 10. So let's see what happens. So I'm gonna pass and we'll see partner's hand. Let's have a look. Okay. So there's your partner's hat, and your partner has nine points, a perfectly decent nine point hand, and your first thought is, oh no, oh no, we've got 25 points, why aren't we in game? Okay, and then of course you're gonna discover that you're not gonna make one no trump. Okay, so, uh, and that's what we mean about evaluation. We love the point count system, it's the best that we've got. But just because you've got 25 points between you does not mean that you can make a game contract. 
to be fair to your partner's nine count, it is one of the one of the least lovely nine counts you're going to see two bear aces and a bear jack. But it is nine points. We have got 25 points. But it's not you. I think most of the time you'll, you'll go down. Well, I say that I'm going to show you a tricky tactic here. I'm a tricky man, though, so we're going to see that. So let's see how it goes. They're going to leave the nine of spades. And as as we guessed, our jack of spades ends up as waste paper. OK. I'll play a small one. You never know. They might do something wrong. I like West overtaking there with the 10. He knows that he can kill are, even if his partner's got a single to nine, his king, queen, and eight are good enough to establish the suit. Okay. So we'll duck that and we'll see what happens. He leads the king of spades. I might as well just win that. Okay, might as well just win that. Okay, there's no point ducking it anymore. You know the spades are breaking five two, don't you? Okay. So how are we gonna play the contract? Any ideas? <clears throat> well, Andy's come up with the idea that I am, so that's very good, Andy. Okay, so playing one no trump here, actually your best bet is just letting the opponents have their tricks. Because what we're, it's not a throw-in play or anything like that, okay? What we're doing is hoping that the diamonds may be discarded, okay? All right, so don't test the diamonds, okay? And this is crucial. It's a very, very clever tactic. What we are doing here is we are giving the opponents the chance to go wrong. And you might think they will never go wrong, but believe me, if I was playing this at a club and I played a spade back, I would expect more than 90% of the East players to discard a diamond. They've got three hearts to the queen, and four clubs to the queen. They've got four clubs to the jack in dummy. Surely they've got to keep their clubs. Throwing the hearts is difficult. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the very first discard was a diamond. Okay, it's a really tough hand. Let's see what happens. So we are going to play a spade. Remember, we're only in one no trump. We're going to lose those spades eventually. Surely West has got an entry. So when he plays, um, we can throw a heart there. And he has thrown a diamond and that's it. We've made our contract just like that. And believe me, do not think that that Q plus is playing particularly badly there. I think that is an awesomely difficult play for, for East to get right. I think he has to see through the cards. If I'm honest, he has to see through the cards. And in the end, once he's discarded one diamond, it doesn't matter. And as you can see now, um, he does well here. He plays the nine of clubs or the seven of clubs there. So doesn't waste his queen. But we're not worried now. We can claim. So we play and we just play our diamonds off. OK, and of course they come in. So it's a clever tactic, but particularly in one no trump contracts, you will see it work really well. OK, really well where um, you're disguising your strength. So let's just go back. I apologize because I I'm just I didn't really go through the top tricks, but there you've got uh, you had six top tricks. So it's one of these classic one no trump contracts. You had ace, king, queen of diamonds, ace, king of clubs, and the ace of spades. You wanted one more, okay? The problem, Ruben, that East has, he's got four clubs and four diamonds. And not only he's got four clubs and four diamonds, he's got queen 10x in a suit that we have bid. So I think it's awesomely difficult. Really, really, really tough. In fact, he threw a club at trick at, um, at the third trick on the third spade, I have to be honest, I think more likely I would have thrown a diamond. And quite often when I do uh, a seminar on discards, one of my favorite seminars, I often say it's the first trick. As soon as I give the opponents the chance to discard, they discard the wrong thing. And everybody says, oh no, that wouldn't happen to me. But believe me, I would say 90% of Easts. And to be honest, I, don't, I, th I think probably I would expect 50% of experts. How are they supposed to know to keep a diamond? How on earth? They've got to guess that South has the king, queen of diamonds. How, how can they do that? How can they do that? I, you know, I, I just don't, I, I, without seeing, if, if my opponents got that one right, I would be worried that they were seeing my hand. As we say, I should be chesting my cards, as it were. Um, oh, of course, North, they can't see North Sand. Ruben, you're getting me confused. OK, they can't see the north hand. Remember, north is not dummy. I apologize. North is not dummy. 
Uh, so don't forget, I decided to get Q Plus not to switch the hands because it gets confusing. So remember, they cannot see four clubs or four diamonds in dummy. Okay, they cannot see the north hand. So East really has a troublesome hand there. He really, really struggles. Okay, anyway, let's leave it, but I think that's tough. Okay, so a little, a little, a little trick for you there. Okay. All right, so um, what have we got to discuss? Um, I've got a bit of news. Um, I've been talking about the tutorial software. We have another delivery of old Q+. I'm told that's coming in this week. So for those of you who did want to try it at, at a cheaper price, as it were, um, we've got some old Q pluses coming in for £29. And they are, they are orderable on the Mr Bridge site. So they'll be coming in this week. Um, so if you are interested in getting uh, Q Plus, you can get that from the Mr. Bridge site and that's at £29. Uh, bear in mind, um, we sell Q15 nowadays at around 96 because that's the, the very top of the thing. So, um, but the, you know, it's, it's a valuable thing. You do not need it, of course, for the website, but it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to play with each other, to play with yourself, to practice with. <clears throat> and I have put a lot of help videos on the website, a lot of help videos on the website and and I am going to look at Max. Thank you for the reminder. I will look up for Max. Not for that, the one I'm suggesting, but I will look up for, for the Max. It's Q plus 11 and there may be Q plus 12 involved as well. Okay, Q plus 11 and 12. Okay, so it is, it's fairly old, but it's, you know, it's got most of what you've got. And in fact, when I was looking at it, because I've got both on my computer, when the, the what do you call those things? The help videos that I have done apply to both. Uh, okay, so you can, and you can get a lot out of it. Okay, a lot out of it, and of course you can, you can do the set hands on it. You don't need it for those set hands. Don't forget, you can play online on BBO. We had, I think, about eight hundred of you played the set hands on BBO. Um, so, uh, and uh, Shirley Tamlin says it. She has eleven, and it's fine. There you go. That's enough for me. If Shirley says it's good, if it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. Oh, sorry. Let's go. Let's go back to a Q plus hand. I can't believe I've started singing. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Um, these are hands that have been sent in. Let's see if we can get excited at the right time. So I'm going to show you both. I tell you what. What I will do is I will, I will make sure we can only see east west because we don't see, need to see north south here. Okay. Sorry about this. Okay. It's just easier because we can concentrate on the two important ones. So, so again, I do have to, if you are a member, you can play the hands on BBI. I have to say that again. You do have to be a member. If you are a member, all of the help files, etc., are in the help section of the website. Okay, so we've got lots of videos that I've created and things. So let's look at these two hands and see how the auction might go. Okay, so it's going to be East opening the bid. This was sent in um, and I was going to look at it last week. So we'll start with the East hand and East is going to open one spade. And I agree with Joy, it's a 4 3 3 3 hand. So it looks bad, but there are two tens there. Okay, and it's 18. It's 18 points as well. But with two tens, don't forget you're downgrading and you're upgrading. So it's an interesting start anyway, because it's got one spade and you've got to decide. You've got to decide what to respond. So one spade, it's West's response. So this is a really nasty response because even if you play a two no trumps artificial, it would usually promise four card support. So I think you've got to devise, you've got to tell a lie here. I, I never tell a lie in a major. I do not want you bidding two hearts here. Okay, I do not want you bidding two hearts. So we're just going to bid two clubs here. So remember our partner thinks we have four. Our partner thinks we have four. As Stuart says, you could choose two diamonds, I don't mind, but I think leave as much space as possible because when you bid two clubs, East can bid a natural two diamonds. So say this hand was sent in and I did send the answer back to uh, the sender uh, with the message, this is not easy. I'm trying to find her name. I apologize because I did. I think I mentioned her name in the, in the Friday seminar. 
Um, so the point is that Pi that we expect as the east hand, we think that West has four clubs in his hand. We think it's a natural bid. It is a natural bid. Okay. You can upgrade uh, Q plus. I'll talk about that on Friday. You can upgrade. I will talk about upgrades on Friday. So two times, this is tough, okay? So here we're gonna to have to be two hearts, full suit forcing, so thank you, Andy. Okay, so two hearts is an artificial bid by West. It is not natural. Remember, Blackwood would be agreeing diamonds if you bid that, if you jump to black. What would, what would East bid over two hearts, do you think? Okay, James Bentley's been a nice bid there, okay, and Andy as well, okay, really important that, okay, it's a beautiful descriptive bid. Can you imagine if West, if East wanted to describe his hand perfectly, what would he bid now? He would bid clubs. Isn't that beautiful? Partner, I've got spades, I've got diamonds, and now I'm bidding clubs. Now, West has permission to be excited because West knows that their side have control in hearts. This is not easy, okay? Um, uh, five spades, four diamonds, and three clubs would leave just one heart. And what that means is that we feel safe if we can agree a suit and bid Blackwood. Once I've bid four suit forcing at this point, we'd be, if I, if I go back to spades here, it should be forcing to game. East would bid just four spades. He's had enough, thank you very much. But at this point, I think West is excited enough to bid four no trumps. He's got 18 points. He feels his partner's got a singles in heart. Remember, his partner's shown five spades and four diamonds. And when he supports clubs, surely he's gonna have three. Okay, it's delayed support. So I think I'm gonna bid Blackwood. And if partner has two of the key cards I'm going to go for slam. I'm not guaranteed to make, but I'm going to go for it. I'm just playing normal key card Blackwood. So we'll go four hearts and I would bid six spades. That is extraordinarily difficult. But what I was doing is I was not getting excited with the West hand too early. Okay, I am waiting to get excited. Eventually, once I'd heard my, look at the way my spades and diamonds fit together, even the clubs. Remember, East expects me to have longer clubs, so he's quite excited about the king of clubs. He's thinking I might have ace queen to five. Okay. And in the end, but I think that's a tough slam to bid, so well done if you would get to six spades on that one, I think a lot. Hilda, all West is doing when, she, when he bids two clubs is partner, I want you to bid again. I'm bidding a natural bid, but what can I bid? Okay. What can I bid with the West hand? It's really tough. Opposite one spade, what can West respond? Okay, East never gets a chance to bid a spin to bid there. Okay, those of you asking. But the question is, what can you respond to one spade with the West hand? And I just don't know. I do not know what to bid with the West hand. So the only thing I think I can do is tell a lie. And the only lie I can think of is two clumps. Okay. Remember, even if you play three no trumps, natural is a pudding raise of one spade. You're much too strong to bid that. And two hearts promises five, and we never lie in a major. So over one spade, I think you have to tell a lie. And if you're going to tell a lie, surely we're better off telling a lie in a minor. Minor lies are better than major lies. Okay. Eventually I got excited with that 18 point hand. Okay, it's a really tricky hand there to finish today with. Okay, um, I've got to give you the quiz, of course. My goodness, my wife's gonna tell me off for overrunning. Okay, so I've got to give you the quiz. So let's quickly give you that. Um, no, that's the wrong button, it's here. So this is the quiz I'm gonna leave you with. Don't forget, even if you're not a member, you can get the answer. It is uploaded now. Apologies, last week it was delayed, but you can get the answer now on our free homepage. For those of you, obviously on the website, you can log in and get it as usual. I'm sure some of you have already seen it. It's three hearts from your partner, a preemptive opening pass, 
and it's your bid. So it's three hearts from your partner, pass, and it's your bid. Okay, three hearts from your partner, pass, and it's your bid. So you've got lovely spades, but it's your choice. Okay, okay three hearts from your partner. So those of you on the website, look forward to seeing there. Um, enjoy the new seminar and the new set hands that run for the next two weeks. And of course, we're talking about Blackwoods. We're still talking about slams. I'll be back on Friday for those of you on the website. <clears throat> and of course, we'll also have the teams then. OK, so <clears throat> enjoy your week. Hopefully enjoy uh, the weather as well. It seems as though it's reasonably set fair and uh, we will see you soon. Thank you very much.